Hello and welcome to Friday Night Magic at the Game Haven in Riverside, Ohio, where you can get more for your games. I am Ryan Johnson, joined in the booth by... Noah Ross. The incomparable Noah Ross. And we represent Dayton Magic Club, where we advise you to play locally and read locally here at the Game Haven or anywhere here in southwestern Ohio. Uh, check us out at www.daytonmagicclubwebsite.com and check us out at our, our lovely host tonight thegamehaven.com mm -hmm. so what we're going to bring you guys tonight is four rounds of modern uh, Friday Night Magic uh, here uh, our first feature match is Curtis Frazier uh, versus Gavin Graney I know that Curtis is on 8-rack, or I strongly suspect he's on 8-rack. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's playing tonight, but that has been his go-to weapon of choice for the last several weeks. I don't know what Gavin's playing, do you know? I was scouting the room, the, and I saw Gavin shuffling up what looked to be Tron of some kind. Tron, huh? What do you think the 8-rack matchup is there? Uh, that... <laughs> I'm really unsure. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. It, it could be really good. It could be really bad. I expect it to go just exactly like that. I expect Curtis to either take over or run out of gas way too fast and just get ran over. Here's my thought. Uh, in Snaring Bridge, it's pretty good. Against it's, Tron. In Snaring Bridge, is pretty good. Against um, Tron, yeah. The uh, lot of discard could be helpful in keeping Gavin from assembling the Tron in the first place. Uh, he can't really help it if he naturally draws it, but he can certainly try to stop him from using all of yeah. his search effects to yeah. uh, to bring it out. So I think the matchup is probably fairly okay for Curtis, but we'll see. I mean, 8-Rack is one of those decks where it tries to like lock you out and yep. then kill you over a very long period of time, which gives your opponent a long time, time to draw out of it. So I think Gavin is down to 6 cards, and he opens with an Urza's Tower. Not bad. Not a bad start. Curtis is uh, definitely on 8-rack. That is an English and a Kozilek, and he is going to see a bunch of... Wait a minute, is that packed? Yeah, it's, uh, it looks like blue-white Tron, perhaps. Or mono-blue Tron, even. Maybe. See, uh, saw him some Alacrum. What's that guy? Some blue cards of various kinds. A pack negation? Is it a pack negation? Whatever it is, Curtis doesn't like it. Shiny. It is shiny. It's a treasure mage, our operator is telling us. Ah, we so forgot to introduce him. Jacob Ross, our operator tonight. Yep. Thanks, Jacob. Treasure mage seems like a good grab there. Yep. Uh-oh. That is the infamous Thoughtseize. And here we're going to take the... What is that? Is that iPhone? No, that looks like maybe a Condescend. It would be weird. If it is stifle. a Condescend. This stifle is not legal. Condescend the uh, counter target spell unless they pay X Scry 2 card. From the real original good. Scry. Yeah, real, real good. good. Real good. Looks like Curtis played a rack. Yeah, for those of you who aren't as familiar with the, the archetypes in modern, 8 rack plays 8 the rack effects uh, in uh, the rack. And then what's the enchantment one called? Shrieking Affliction. Shrieking Affliction. Both of them deal damage to your opponent if they have less than 3 cards in their hand. I think that might be a Shrieking Affliction. Uh, what was that? A repeal? Yes, repeal. Repeal is the bounce spell that draws you. Oh, it's a waste knot. The new one. I haven't seen the deck since uh -huh. Curtis had waste knot. Very too. good. Waste knot. Uh, the new M15 card could be a, a uh, Ooh, wrench mine. Kind of a value engine for this deck, That's generating right. mana. He's gonna or, get uh, something right here. He's gonna get a zombie. Now here's the thing about wrench mind. Wrench mind says they have to discard two cards unless they discard an artifact. Correct. Now, Gavin's deck full of artifacts to discard for yep. value. But Curtis is going to get a zombie token off the Waste Knot because he discarded a creature. Value City. Gavin up to double blue. That's a talisman. Look around the corner there? Yeah. Yeah. Talisman. Just a way to get blue mana off your, your codeless base. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm oh, sorry, Signet. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Signet. Oh, it's a Signet. Yeah. So, Curtis looks like probably another discard spell. Yep. It is. Inquisition. And he hits... What is that? It's a... Uh... Alright, Curtis is pointing to all of his effects. Effects. 
He says, you got zero cards in your hand. You should lose Yep, and this is the point where Curtis wants to get to. His opponent's out of resources. Yep. And he's just going to start taking damage. Yep. He's out of resources, so he's going to either have to... There's another oh, rack, and the rack stacks. That's pretty bad. So this is a ton of damage every turn. Yep. So he's at zero cards right now, so he just took six. That hurts. And because he's up against it, he has to play whatever he draws. Yep. He looks like he found... Uh, thirst for knowledge is my theory. Thirst for knowledge? Said, Waste Not will trigger there. It's a non-creature spell. <laughs> Waste this Not is, uh, triggers off of Thirst for Knowledge. Every time your opponent discards a card. I was not aware. It's the best. That is awesome. I was of the opinion that I thought Waste Not wouldn't really do enough. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it, it runs the risk of just generating, like, some mana that you can't use. Yeah. You know? But uh, it seems like it could actually be a pretty powerful value engine here. And that <clears> is going is. to get a expedition map Expedi expedition out of Gavin's map. hand. And this is what it's like to play against Date Rack. Well, he it's just, just a blast. he discarded an artifact. So he drew cards? Is that from Waste Knot? Waste Knot? I gotta see Waste Knot. We're gonna, we're gonna review Waste Knot because it just has a bunch of yeah, different it's, abilities. Yeah, it's got on a it. multiple, a huge text box. Oh, he says another thirst for knowledge. He's going to draw three, take a look. He's going to try and discard something and not die. Oh, man, Waste Knot is great against these decks with uh, with thirst for thirst knowledge. Thirst for knowledge. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, whenever he discards a non-creature, non-land, Curtis draws a card. So that's actually kind of crazy here. It's kind of fantastic. So it turns thirst for knowledge into I draw three and discard two, you draw two. Yep. A lot of the times. Like, that makes yep. it way worse. Or if you discard a Platinum Angel... Yep, he gets a... He uh, gets a dude. He gets a zombie when he discards a creature. Yeah, there you mana go. when he discards a land. And whenever he discards a non-creature on land, Curtis so, gets a draw card. There you go. So that's kind of how I thought it would go. Yeah. Uh, game one, anyway. Mm -hmm. That's as... Yeah. Now, I don't know what Curtis has in his board for Tron. I don't know if he has much. I don't know if he needs much. Mm -mm. He, he might plays. have Fulminator Mage. Yeah, he could have Fulminator Mage. He, and that would be a excellent. good spot for it. And he has the a lot of the stuff that you would think of it being like good cards against Tron is in his main deck. He has Ensnaring Bridges, yeah. all the discard, uh, Liliana, the Veil, you know, all these ways to pressure what is essentially a combo deck, which is which is what Tron yep. is. A multi turn combo deck. And you know, the Mono Blue Tron is uh, a deck that actually has existed as far back as original Mirrodin mm -hmm. when Tron was in the core set at the time, eighth edition. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. It, instead of the green-based Tron decks, like the Tooth and Nail decks, that use things like Reap and Sow and Sylvan Scrying to find, to tutor up pieces of your Tron, mm -hmm. it just decided that it was going to use a bunch of scry and draw effects to naturally draw into the Tron. And it played things like Vine Slaver mm -hmm. and uh, other big effects like that, artifact-based effects, and a bunch of counter spells. And that's really what we see Gavin is playing. It's really based on that same Mirrodin shell the problem is it it's really counting on burning through its deck with these thirst for knowledge and with all this scry. Yep. And Curtis's deck is just really good at, at stopping you from yeah. assembling that, you know? Yeah. He can't just draw the Sylvan Scrying off the top, cast it that turn, get a Tron piece, and, and go. It up. So yeah. I think that makes his deck maybe a little bit worse against 8-Rack yeah. than like the green-red Tron builds would be. Yeah, not just that. The green-red Tron has some built-in stuff. Against Curtis, he's got Pyroclasm to take care of any of these little zombie guys. That's that are true. Out. That's true. He's got a, a Ancient Grudge in the board to fight any kind of rack. That yeah, yeah. Ancient out. Grudge is really good against I mean, this deck. It can kill a Snaring Bridge and the right. Rack, it's just he's got important. tools in yeah. the Mono Blue. I don't know if it's well positioned. He is going to need to rely heavily on what Blue gives him, which is counter spells. And I don't know what his counter package looks like after board. Uh, yeah, it'd be hard to say. Being on the play. Makes these pay X counters better, right? These condescends and stuff. Being able to play, yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, if he has remands, I think I saw remand. Yeah, I think I saw remand as well. It makes sense. It does what his deck wants to do: buy a turn, draw a card, dig deeper for the Tron. Right. I don't know if he has. There's not a ton of good hard counters in the format. Correct. That, that's an issue. He had pact and negation. Yep. Right. And which he, is a hard counter. Spell the hard snare. Way. Not particularly good if he has it. It can counter Waste Knot, but there's not a ton of counter other targets. Knot. It can counter, counter Wrench, wrench mind. mind. 
I don't know if it's good enough to bring in. No. It doesn't really answer any of the business. If he's playing, if he has access to some sort of um, chalice, he might have chalice. Well, chalice would be sweet. Chalice would be fantastic. <laughs> he could have chalice. He could have. Uh, he could have some sort of ratchet bomb. He might have ratchet bomb. Ratchet bomb would be very good here. Curtis's um, deck is a prison deck, um, and like prison decks traditionally do, it requires assembling a very difficult to beat board state of permanence. Right. Right. It's not a control, a true control deck. Con the difference there really is a control deck would use counter spells, target removal, and right. board sweeping effects to Reactionary remove troublesome effects. permanence. Curtis wants to proactively assemble a difficult to beat board state. Right. Where Ratchet Bomb would actually be very, very good. Yeah. So maybe he's got this access to this in the board. He had drink or a, uh, Treasure Mage, maybe he shifts gears a little bit. There's an expedition map. That's a good start. It's a it's a good start. Uh, oh, and we have lost our feet. It's back. We're back. What do you get? Uh, Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize. Looking at a hand of a bunch of blue cards. I don't see a ton of Tron pieces. You don't have to whisper. We can just speculate about it out loud. I'm just wondering why he's got one card in hand in. My theory is he's holding a non-legal target in his hand, and his, Curtis is taking a closer look at all the legal targets. His hand is Remand, Condescend, Repeal. Curtis is taking the Remand. Remand. So he's got a Tron piece. It's Tron the Tower. Yep. Nice, classy, white border Tron. Delicious. I love it. Ooh, wrench mine. There's a wrench mine. He, Curtis knows Ooh. there weren't a ton of artifacts in the hand. He said like condescend. Uh, condescend, which is like I said, on the play, so much stronger. Yeah, it's it's uh in this matchup, condescend on the draws just it's not good enough. But on the play, it has some value. Right there, you saw. Yep. That's a, a main phase. Couple, main thirst. Phase. Thirst. He's looking for a land. Thirst is such a powerful card. Yep. And I think it, it, it is really, I think, underplayed. It's probably the best card draw spell left in modern. Oh, wait, he already played next. Yep. Um, and I, it, it's a card that sees some play even in sometimes legacy, and it's restricted in vintage. Restricted in vintage. And no one plays it. Um, There's a Liliana, which is going to resolve, which is going to put Gavin under some pressure. Gavin is not good at getting a resolved Leon off the table. He can repeal it. Right? Repeal is permanent, right? Re non land permanent? Repeal is non land permanent, yes. Okay. Which is fine. That is a Raven's Crime. One of the core engines Ooh, of Curtis's deck is bad. to Ooh, get. He says. Here's. Oh, you're going to repeal Liliana. Yeah. Repealed it. Well done. Raven's Crime, which has the retrace, so you can discard lands. Curtis yeah. wants to get like three or four lands in play, and then just Raven's use Raven's Crime as kind of a mind twist. Empty your hand. We just saw Liliana come back down. Yeah, it looks like he played the Condescend in response to the Raven's Crime, and then or not Condescend, but the repeal mm -hmm. to bounce the Liliana. But Curtis had the land to okay, and then he played it, land and replayed it. Yep, that's some good sequencing from Curtis. If you're worried about repeal, yep, I'm sure he will. I'm sure it was on his radar. He thought seized and saw it. Probably Curtis, a pox player in, in Legacy. Hmm. That it looks like a retraced Raven's Crime just happened there. Boom. Is that a Dark Confidant? That's a Dark Confidant. Yeah. So, again, now Curtis' the deck is running on all cylinders. His deck, like the pox deck in Legacy, is designed to play off the top. Mm -hmm. It's got a ton of mana sources, and once he gets a victory condition in play, he doesn't need to do much else. Right, he no. can lands become retrace fodder for Raven's Crime mm -hmm. if your opponent starts trying to sandbag cards. It's almost impossible to try to build up a hand again here because Liliana plus Raven's Crime every turn. Yeah, that's two. Just cards. threatens to just take two cards away from you if you try to hold anything back, and if you try to play your stuff out, well, then when Curtis draws the rack, that's when you start to get punished. Right. So, and Liliana has a built-in. Safety valve. If he's actually able to find a creature that he wants to play, and exactly. Just go it's down. actually for those people who don't have a lot of experience playing against these prison type effects, it can be really hard to break this up because there's just no safe spot for your cards. Exactly. It always feels like playing your cards is so bad, but holding them doesn't do any good either. Nope. So, and now Curtis is just starting to beat down. He's uh, added a new vault to the table, which yeah, is the yeah, best man land vault. left in, in modern. Not left, I guess. You don't have Mishra's Factory, but 
Mutaval does a pretty good impression. That is an Oblivion Stone. So he's got the Tron together, right? Is that what I see? Yeah, he has Tron. No, that's two towers. Right. Two towers and a power plant. He doesn't have a mine. No, that's a mine. I'm sorry. That's just a different art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got Tron. I think these are the 8th edition. The top yeah. two are 8th yep. edition. What's the They all are. Oh, that's they an are. Edition this is like a tower to me, the mine. It's the one where they're mining like the Mesa type things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Oblivion Stone is going to do a really good job at cleaning up the board. Curtis read it to make sure that it hit Planeswalkers, and it does. It says non-land non permanence. permanence. Unless they have the uh, the thing on it, right? Is that correct? Unless they have a fate counter. A fate counter. Yes. What, what's happening right now? What's that guy? That is an expedition map. going to probably go get it. Oh, that is a... A. It's Curtis Scott. What is? Oh, it's a waste knot. Oh, cool. I bet Curtis is not displeased to see that. That's a good. That's a good one. That's a good one to have hanging around. What he really wants to time. find is one of his eight copies of the rack that give his deck its name. Correct. That's so what he really wants. Really to getting pressure on that life total. That oblivion stone. His opponent is at zero cards right now. I think. That's true. Uh, Expedition map fetched up a academy ruins. And Ooh. Academy Ruins gets back. Ooh, found an angel. Platinum Angel. The Platinum. Now, Platinum Angel is pretty good. Um, the you can't lose the game, your opponent can't win the game. But Liliana of the Veil is a great answer to Platinum Angel. Yeah, it, it gets them every time. However, Academy Ruins. Academy Ruins. Can uh, just make it. Safe. Can get back Oblivion Stone. It, it can all day. So, so we get kind of like a counter lock here. Yeah, it's interesting uh, uh, because what Gavin can do now with Academy Ruins, like like people can do in Legacy against discard with Brainstorm and Sensei's Divining Top, they can hide the cards on top of their library. It's pretty safe up there. And uh, Gavin can now put cards on top of his library and then draw them and cast them, which will keep them safe from Curtis's discard effects. But he is going to have to assemble uh, some kind of board through Liliana and... And the rack. Right? Yep, Solemn Simulacrum. That's the new art. So. We'll see. This got interesting. Yeah. Uh, he's He found the Academy Ruins and made it a game. Yeah. It wasn't looking good. Man, Academy Ruins is just an insane effect. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. That card is so gross. I remember playing it in Standard. I did too. Playing uh, mostly against it. Right. And I just... Uh, it's real good to get Mind Slavers back. I don't know what's happening right now. Oh. Looks like we had a concession there. Someone scooped up. We're not really sure who it is. May have been Curtis, but I doubt it. Right? Oh, he was dead. Yeah, he took enough damage to die. Who did, Curtis? No, Gavin. Gavin died. Oh. Life souls are important. He uh, just didn't have time. He just he, Curtis had that Ran really disruptive board state. Gavin had that, that really powerful engine. Um, assembled, and I, given a couple more turns, he could have uh, definitely clawed his way out of that. But yeah. Curtis's early disruption, he finally found uh, he found another Liliana and a copy of the rack. Backbreaking. And, uh, yeah, that just uh, that gutted him. So, Curtis Frazier will win 2 nothing over Gavin Greeny uh, in round one of our modern tournament. We're broadcasting live from the Game Haven in Riverside, Ohio, if you enjoy modern. If you enjoy Standard, if you just enjoy playing Magic the Gathering card, you should come out here and check us out. Absolutely. Check us out at uh, DaytonMagicClubWebsite.com. Mm -hmm. We'll have new articles starting to go up shortly about your local tournament scene here in southwestern Ohio. Can't wait. Frequent contributor Noah Ross yeah. here sitting next to us. He can't wait to get back to it. I can't wait. So uh, that was round one in the books. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be come back to bring you round two. We're going to go scout the room and find some good uh, some good decks to get on camera. Yeah, for round two for you guys. So stay tuned. We'll be back soon. Thanks.